What's up, everybody? So it's the time we're leading the final chapter of the Return of the King today. And what's interesting is that I had lost track of time since we started this series. And April 4th, 2022 is when I officially started the Mondays in Middle Earth read through, naively thinking that I was going to be able to get it all done <laughs> before Rings of Power aired. That didn't happen. Um, and and technically we're still a long way from being done because my original goal was to read through the entirety of the hobbit lord of the rings and the silmarillion and we still have to do the silmarillion and we still have to do the appendices of return of the king now i don't know how those are going to roll out quite yet because it's been very easy to do um the the books the novels because they're in chapter format so it's very easy to go through chapter by chapter what like we've been doing and just do read throughs um however getting into the appendices you know i try to keep these episodes i mean they're kind of however long they are it's just per chapter so some of them have been like 15 minutes long most have been in the 20 i would say 20 to 30 minute range a couple have been over 30 minutes but most are like 20 25 minutes um so more than likely what i'll probably do with the appendices is look at you know once i'm 20 minutes in I'll see where I'm at and see if we need to expound upon things a little bit more. But um, in the meantime, you know, we still have a lot ahead of us. But I do want to say thanks to those of you who have been following along since the beginning because we are coming to the end of The Return of the King. Um, what I will be doing is today we're going to be reading Chapter 9, The Grey Havens. Um, then I will be doing a recap episode, which will be, you know, recover, you know, recapping the entirety of the read through. And after that, because that's kind of the, that, that's kind of the end of the official story. And then after that, we will be getting into the appendices of the turn of the King. And then once we're through with that, we'll get into the Silmarillion. So if that all sounds good to you and you haven't already done so like subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my channel as I continue to read through. All of these things and if you haven't watched the previous episodes get on it what are you waiting on you got plenty of time there's a whole you know 50 plus episodes for you to dive into and to those of you who have supported financially along the way i really appreciate it um you guys have helped me keep the bills paid keep the lights on keep the cats fed and you have supported this channel not just you know with this particular series but all the other things that i do if you haven't and you can it's really easy to support. You can just drop a super thanks on any uploaded video you see, including this one. There's some pre-programmed amounts that YouTube has down below when you click the super thanks button, but you can also, you know, program in whatever you want. Put in 50 bucks, you know, 72 cents, you know, $72, whatever you want. There's also memberships here on the channel starting at $2.99 a month, so three bucks a month, and then go up from there with private videos and some other fun stuff for members. Plus you can do super chats on the live streams and premieres. Uh, which are the same thing as a super thanks, but it just happens during a live stream or premiere. And there's also the Patreon page for my fantasy book series, along with the point and click adventure game and uh, what else is over there? Tabletop stuff. Yeah, I'm having a brain fart with my brother and my wife. <laughs> so check that out as well. Discord's down below. Let's get into Chapter 9, The Grey Havens. The day after the battle, Frodo rode to Mickle Delvine and released the prisoners that had been held there. Um, they found poor Frediger Bolger, fatty no longer, because he's been locked up for a while um, and uh, has lost quite a bit of weight. <laughs> he doesn't realize who they are at first. And he's like, who's, who's out there shouting with the big voice? And he's like, is that Pippin? What's your size in hats now? Because they've grown, you know, that was the thing at the Int, the Int waters. And then, of course, poor Lobelia, um, look, ver looking very old and thin, insist but insisting on hobbling on her own two feet and leaning on Frodo's arm, but still clutching the umbrella, which we failed to mention in the last episode. There was a I had read through that part and someone mentioned, hey, you didn't talk about Lobelia. And I was like, you're right. I kind of skipped over that in the last one. But they they put her away because she attacked some of the ruffians with her umbrella. Um it said she she was quite touched and was driven away in tears, had never in her life been popular before, um, crushed by the news of Lotho's murder and would not return to Bag End. She gave it back to Frodo. So in the end, you know, not a bad person at, at, at the all, went back to her own people. Um, it says she did die. She passed the next year. Um, Frodo was surprised. She'd left all of her money and Lothos to, for him to use for helping hobbits made homeless by the troubles. So the feud between their families was ended. So this is a really cool way to end at the, because if you go back to the beginning, you know, they didn't have a good relation with the Sackville Bagginses. And then, um, by the end of it all, the feud is forgiven and, you know, it all comes back together again, which is a really sweet way to, to, to end things. So this, 
the bulk of this early part of the chapter is all about how they're you know they're repairing the Shire, cleaning everything up, um, getting rid of the gangs, um, reducing the sheriffs to their proper functions and numbers, um, you know, replanting everything else, so on and so forth. Oh, uh, this is the part where Sam he'd completely forgotten the gift the gift that Galadriel gave him. Um, and when he opens it up, it's filled with a gray dust, soft and fine, in the middle of which was a seed, like a small nut with a silver shale. <laughs> Sam planted saplings in all the places where specially beautiful or beloved trees had been destroyed. That's awesome. Okay, then he goes to the three farthing stone, cast the seed into the air with the dust. No, sorry, he cast the dust into the air here. Said the little silver nut he planted in the party field where the big party tree had been, and wondered what would come of it. All through the winter, he remained as patient as he could, and tried to restrain himself from going around constantly to see if anything was happening. Spring surpassed his wildest hopes this year. Um, it was indeed a Malorn tree. Um, the wonder of the neighborhood. It said, in after years, as it grew in grace and beauty, it was known far and wide, and people would come long journeys to see it. The only melon tree west of the mountains and east of the sea and one of the finest in the world the yield of leaf was astonishing it says here and everywhere there was so much corn that harvest every barn was stuffed the barth barley was so fine that the beer of 1420 was long remembered became a byword and instead indeed a generation later one might hear an old gaffer in an inn after a good pint of well-earned ale put down his mug and say ah oh, that was a proper 1420 that was <laughs> so 1420 very good year you know, the travelers have come back. They're now being referred to as the travelers with a capital T. Um, and they are repairing the Shire. Of course, here um, on the 13th of the month of March, Farmer Cotton finds Frodo lying in his bed, clutching a white gem that hung on a chain about his neck and seemed half in a dream. It's gone forever. And now all is dark and empty. But the fit passed. Frodo recovered and said nothing about himself. So it's a, you know, every year time of thing. It's Rosie. Rose Cotton. Seems she doesn't like me going abroad as much. Uh, <laughs> so Sam was going out doing forestry work, and now he's um, now he's going to be domesticated. Um, so Pafrodo tells him, get married and move in with Rosie. Come into Bag End. You can bring all the family. There's plenty of room. So he married her in the spring of 1420, which was also famous for its weddings. And then once everything had been planned and set going, Frodo began to take to a quiet life, writing a great deal and going through all of his notes. By the way, does it ever say what is the white jewel that Frodo wears here? Because it mentions here the white jewel that he was clutching at his neck, but it also says um, he wore it on a chain that he would often finger. I don't know that I've ever... Did it say somewhere and I missed it? What is the white jewel? Or is it just a... Um, it's just a thing for him, like a like a token, a good luck charm? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, when you When they do it... A test study in a, a placebo is it just like is it just a placebo effect or is there actually some magic in this white crystal and what is it somebody who knows tolkien better than i do please drop that in the comments below thank you time went on 1421 came in uh, so here we get to the part where frodo went through his papers and his writings with sam and handed over the keys big book with plain red leather covers tall pages almost now completely filled many leaves covered with bilbo's hand but also with frodo's hand Divided into chapters, but chapter 80 was unfinished, and there were some blank leaves. I have quite finished, Sam. The last pages are for you. So on September the 21st, they set out together, Frodo on the pony that had borne him all the way from Minas Tirith, and was now called Strider and Sam on his beloved Bill. Sam did not ask where they were going. He thought he could guess. And then they come across the tree they hid behind when the Black Rider showed up for the first time. Oh, yeah. So Frodo starts to sing. I'm getting goosebumps right now as I'm reading this part. Frodo starts to sing. Um, and as he sings, as if as an answer, from down below, coming up the road of the valley, voices returned in song in Elvish. Um, Frodo Sam halted, and they saw a glimmer of travelers coming towards him. It was Gildor and many fair elven folk. And there to Sam's wonder rode Elrond and Galadriel. <laughs> And this is when we see the rings. So Elrond wore a mantle of gray, had a star upon his forehead, a silver harp in his hand, and upon his finger was a ring of gold with a great blue stone. Vilya, mightiest of the three. Galadriel sat upon a white palfrey, robed in glimmering white, and on her finger was Nenya, the ring wrought of Mithril. And riding behind on a small gray pony was Bilbo himself. 
I've passed the old took today, so that's settled. Now I think I'm quite ready to go on another journey. Are you coming? And Frodo says, yes, I'm coming. The ring bears shall go together. Where are you going, master? cried Sam, though at last he understood what was happening. To the havens, Sam. And I can't come? Fuck, I'm going to cry, guys. <laughs> like, I cry every time at the end of the movies. I hope, I'm already getting tears in, tears in my eyes, guys. Oh, man. Your time may come. Don't be sad, Sam. You will always be, you cannot always be torn in two. Oh, but Sam said, and tears started in his eyes. I thought you were going to enjoy the Shire for years and years. Oh, man. Pobrecito. Then Elrond and Galadriel rode on, for the third age was over, and the days of the rings were past. With them went many of the elves, and among them was a sadness that was yet blessed and without bitterness. And they came to the gates. Cured and the shipwright came forth to meet them. So this is an elf, they say. He had a very long beard. It said very tall he was, with a beard that was very long, gray and old, save his eyes that were keen as stars. He looked at them and bowed and said, all is now ready. Is this the only elf that I've ever heard mention of that has a beard? Meeting them at the docks is <laughs> a robed figure all in white. Oh, my goodness. Frodo saw that Gandalf now wore openly on his hand the third ring, Narya the Great. The stone upon it was red as fire. They were glad because they knew Gandalf was going to ride with them. Oh, here comes Merry and Pippin in great haste. You tried to give us the slip once before and failed, Frodo. You almost succeeded this time, but you failed again. This time, though, Sam didn't give you up. It was Gandalf. <laughs> oh, Gandalf says, go in peace. I will not say do not weep, for not all tears are an evil. I don't feel guilty at all. <laughs> Even Gandalf says I'm allowed to cry. Oh, man. When at last... Oh, this is amazing. Listen to this part here. Oh, hang on. I, I've, I've got to find it again. So the, they're on the ship. It's sailing away. The light of the glass of Galadriel that Frodo bore glimmered was lost, and the ship went out into the high sea and passed out of the west. Until at last on a night of rain, Frodo smelled a sweet fragrance in the air and heard the sound of singing coming over the water. And it seemed to him that it, as in his dream in the house of Bombadil, the gray rain curtain turned all the silver glass and was rolled back, back and he beheld white shores beyond them, a far green country under a swift sunrise. Oh, Sam, however, stayed at the havens. As he looked at the gray sea, he saw only a shadow in the waters that was soon lost in the west, and he stood far into the night, hearing only the sigh and murmur of the waves, and the sound of them sank deep into his heart. Oh, Mary and Pippin were with him, and they were silent. <sighs> but they had companionship on the road home. Oh. As Rose drew him in and sat him on a chair, he put little Eleanor in his lap and drew a deep breath. Well, I'm back, he said. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, wow. That is the end of The Return of the King, everybody. It's amazing how a book that I've read, you know, probably a dozen times in my lifetime, it's been a long time since I've read it, can still move me to tears. I mean, the films move me to tears every time I watch. There are sequences in those films, like Boromir's death scene gets me every single time when he calls Aragorn his captain, his king, you know, his brother's captain, his king, every single freaking time. And the ending here in the film, I get weepy every time too so um but i had i had um i still think the most emotional there was some really emotional moments in this book um also two towers like theoden's death scene wrecked me uh but also just leading up to that like the whole battle and then there's that scene um i remember the scene where um Gollum is looking at sam and frodo um, Frodo has his, you know, I think it was when Frodo is sleeping in Sam's lap and, and Gollum is looking at them and it says in the moonlight, he suddenly looked like this frail old creature that was like reaching out to touch them, to share in their companionship because for the first time in, you know, decades, he was starting to feel 
companionship for the first time and Frodo is treating him like an actual person as opposed to just a beast of, you know, hatred. And um, that scene got me. Like there was just some stuff that really just hit me throughout this. So I've recovered. I think I'm, I think I'm good now. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for following along. I appreciate uh, uh, you guys listening to me. Hopefully you appreciate the the earnestness of reading and, and the, the emotions that can come with reading a good book. Um, I'm also, I'm really easily emotionally um, swayed by TV shows and books though. So don't take that to, it's, I, Chris laughs at me. I cry at every, I like cry almost every show we watch. We watch. <laughs> I'm just, I get into it really easy. So that, that last scene there. I just, you, I felt Sam's, you know, you feel Sam's heartache, like his, his master's going away, you know, his best friend, you know, and, and he's going away and he can't follow and, and he's torn because he's going to have to live the rest of his life, you know, with, you know, with only the memory of his master and all of his friends, you know, and, but just so good. Anyway, thanks for following along, everybody. We'll be continuing, so don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support if you can, all the ways we talked about at the beginning, but in case you don't remember, um, Super Chats on these premieres and any live stream you see. After the video has been uploaded, you can do a Super Thanks. Um, pre-programmed, pre-programmed amounts are down below. I think Google has them set at like $5, 10 and $15, but you can also do 2 bucks, 20 bucks, $72, program your own amounts in. Memberships here on the channel, month to month. You can also join the Patreon page if you want to get our book our tabletop source book and our point and click adventure game. And hopefully you'll join us in discord as well to have greater discussions about the Lord of the Rings and game with us as well. Until next time, everybody stay safe. Happy reading.